Hey YouTube, and welcome back to Mike's Mini Motors. So we're back to working on the Honda Ruckus, and actually we're gonna be working on two Honda Ruckuses. Brandon's gonna be joining me shortly. And what we're gonna be installing today is the Pro Build 171cc kit and caboodle setup, big bore kit, um, from Rolling Wrench. And so it's not only just the uh, cylinder and piston, it's also a, a new head, cam, slide carb, the whole nine. So it should be quite the improvement in performance. Uh, another thing that we're going to be doing also while we have the engines off is both Brett and I are going to be doing uh, rear disc brakes. That will be a second video after this one, but so this video will be pulling the engine off, doing the 171 kit, and then next video we'll do the brakes, and then putting it back on. So, uh, but like usual, let's get to me showing, I'm going to show you the, guys the, all the parts that are included in this kit and caboodle, and then we'll get to work. All right, so here's the contents of the 171 Pro Build Kit and Caboodle. So you get the two valve, big valve head. And you can see if it even says Pro Build. It comes with all the associated hardware. You do need to reuse your rockers, but it's not that big a deal. And then the new piston and cylinder. And nice thing too is Matt at Rolling Wrench puts the all your piston rings on here and then puts it in the cylinder so that that's already ready to go and then you can just slide it down and put your wrist pin in there and again it comes with a new wrist pin your gaskets and then there's the pro build camshaft that'll be going in there and it also comes with the pro build slide carb and even a jet kit for that so that's the whole part kit for this um, but before we can do anything with this, we need to get this engine off the bike. So me and Brandon, now that he's here, are going to do that in the hyperlapse real quick. So see you guys when we get the engine off. All right, so we got both of our engines off um, and put on the engine stands that we just built. Um, ignore how dirty these are. <laughs> uh, we knew that our- That's clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that when we were gonna be doing this that we could do our, our deep clean on the engines for our spring cleaning. Um, but we got them facing two different directions for the camera, just this one with the head facing you guys. And then on this, on Brandon's, the head facing off to the side, just so you can see it from both perspectives since we're doing them both at the same time. Um, but what we need to do first is we're going to pull off our cooling shrouds and like the our clock clocking risers. Um, I still have to pull my exhaust off because it's there. Brandon's already got his off. Uh, and we're going to drain the oil. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick and then we can start jumping into the disassembly of the engine. All right, so we got the uh, cooling shrouds off, pulled out our spark plug as well, drained the oil. We were ready to pop the valve cover off, and that's where we're going to start the disassembly. Let me zoom you in a little bit. So you can see the valve cover just got the four eight millimeters here. And then Brandon can do his. Got it. All right, so what we got to do next is right here, this is the timing chain tensioner. There's two eight millimeters here. This will relieve the pressure here. Okay, she's out of there. This is on Grab the hammer. Hammer? Yeah, do a little pop and snap. Here, oh, I had to... Here, I'll show you guys this, what I just did. <clears throat> oh, that's Brandon. Hello. All up close and personal. So these are just on there kind of tight. So what I do is just take the screw and put it in the hole just a little ways and pull it to the side and then that breaks it loose. There you go. So with those off of there, we can now remove our rockers. Sorry. It's the 12. All 
All right. And then these are the, the main studs that hold your head and cylinder and everything together. And it needs to be removed in a cross pattern. Pull our rockers off. Um, one thing I do, just as a thing, let me see if you can catch that. See, when I took these off, I lay them down here in the position they were at. So, looking at the rockers, it was this way, so I lay it down, and then that way when I go to put it back together, I know which ones were where. All right, so we got the, the rockers off of here, and then there are some dowels here. And these we will be reusing. So one thing that's kind of interesting about these dowels is Brandon's engine didn't have any in it. Here and here where they're supposed to be, there weren't any. And we thought maybe they'd be in the bottom of his rockers. But nope, they're not there. They just didn't didn't have any dowels so when we get to reassembling this I have a a junk GY6 over here that we can disassemble Let's see if we got dowels in it because yeah otherwise we'll have to order some okay so go back to this one you can see a little better now that we have the the rockers off and the tank the chain tensioner off you can get the cam out of there if you just walk the chain off of it, it pulls right out And now we have these two bolts here. And actually, I'm going to pull off this uh, EGR block plate real quick. The new kit doesn't have actually the EGR stuff here. It has the mount for it. So I'm, that's why I'm taking this off so I can reuse it and put it on there. Okay. These are really long bolts. Then I can pull the head off. And there's the head. All right. And once you get those separated too, you can then pull, well, I guess you gotta get the gasket out usually, the lower timing chain guide, which we will be reusing. Look, he's actually got some dowels. I got a couple. And there should be two on here. And on mine, there's one still in the cylinder. And then the other one was still in the head. So I just gotta wiggle her out. And the other thing you can do is pull off the gasket as well. We do not need this for the 171. It comes with a full set. This is just for the 150. All right. So now with that all off of there, we can now pull the cylinder off. Okay. You want to start? There's no, there's no more. Oh. All That's all there is to the cylinder. So it just slides off of here. A little pop. Yeah. There we go. Did blow hammer for the wind. Watch your fingers. Just enough to break it loose, not damage anything. It'll be a little tight sliding it off the piston just because oh, your dolls are on there too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we just ran into that with mine. Come on now. I was testing it. <laughs> but then, yeah, to get the piston to, to release, it's a little more tension. All right, so there's the cylinder. 
All right. Now, last thing we gotta do is pull the piston out. But you gotta get the little C, there's C clips here. It'll actually be easier to show you on Brandon's. Okay, so as you can see, little C clamp kind of comes right through the mid part of the the pin to hold it in there, so it'll Move slide back and forth. Real quick. You can see now from the, the with the light there, mm. that's the little tab he's talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, this little tab right here. Kind of hard to see. It's a little dark, but we'll get in there with a pair of pliers and it's just really just kind of twist it out. And it just comes out just like that. And there's one on both sides. But you only need to but remove only, one. Yep. And then you can just push that pin through. Check this little screwdriver for. So normally they just push out. <laughs> <laughs> We're experiencing, as they would call, technical difficulties, but it's hitting on the lip. Same lip. Um, on both sides. Yeah, like right at the top, there's like a little indent, kind of where you'd slide that in. Um, it seems like it's kind of catching on both sides in that exact same spot. So I'm wondering if I, to apply pressure, no. Use a socket and tap it. There it goes. There. Now it's through. And it's full of oil, so a little harder to grab. Just grab a little rag. And get it around that. And also be careful around here, because that's just open to the inside of your engine case. Yeah. Where you don't want stuff going. So. Once we get this piston off of here, we might cover that for a moment. There it is. Got 10 millimeters in there. Oh, is the 10 millimeter? <laughs> like, why won't it pull out? There we go. And away we go. And that's a 150 piston. And that's a 150 piston. Really dirty. Kind of burning a little bit. Maybe but see the burn up here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. There we go. A little dirty. Not too. I mean, it's just build up uh, from firing. Uh, we. I know I didn't tune my bike a little bit. Uh, I probably could have run it a little bit better myself, but uh, that's not gonna be a problem with this new swap. Uh, we're gonna get it all dialed in the right way. All right, so I'll reset the camera and get my piston off here and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so got that off of there. Another thing I was gonna show is that we cleaned up the, the gasket surface because some of it was stuck to it. But I was just gonna show you these, you get these little plastic razor blades which worked pretty well for it. They cleaned it off, doesn't mar up the metal surface. So I'll put a link to that if you guys are interested. Um, but next we need to put our base gasket on there and it actually comes with two different ones, a thicker and a thinner one. They're not like huge difference, but you can tell. Um, and the, the thinner one, which is this guy here, will give you a little bit of higher compression, which will give you a little more torque, not as much top end, and then the thicker one will do the opposite. It's a little bit lower compression, um, not as much torque, but it will give you a better top end. And since Brandon and I around town, mostly the highest is like 45, we're gonna go with the thinner one to give us more torque. And so yeah, all you gotta do is just slide it. Look at that. Then also make sure you have your two dowel pins in place. So once we have that on there, one nice thing about buying this ProBuild kit from Matt is he already puts the piston rings on the cylinder and in, it should be on the piston and then installs it into the cylinder. So what you can do is I took some oil and rubbed it around on the inside here so that there's just some lubrication and then I'll push it back slowly. You don't want it to pop out otherwise you gotta re you know, check your rings and stuff. So just enough to get the the wrist pin through and then also make sure the piston you can see on the top there it does say in which means intake so it goes towards the top which is where the intake is 
slide this on here. And a little trick I learned from that, when you get something with a magnet, which is like my scribe does, you can use that to feed the chain through. I need to get this to the point where I can get the connecting rod. Go ahead. Come on. Stuck on. Nothing. Oh, That's it's on the chain. Is it clipping the chain? chain. Okay. Twisted. I'll hold it back here a second. You put your connecting rod in the center. And actually, once I get past this point, I'll move the camera over to Brandon's because you can. this is where you need to see that angle. So from here you can see a little better. We got the piston just pushed. You can see Brandon's head really well. Yeah, my head's really, really good. <laughs> um, you can just push this out past the little skirt here. Just enough to be able to get the wrist pin in. And before you do that, make sure you put a little lube. It's still good. On the wrist pin. You always use more lube. You just line up the connecting rod. Slides in, you push it in, and now we get to put in the new C clips, or I think some people call them G clips. All right, so as you can see, we actually pulled this back off. Uh, we wanted to make sure to get that clip on the uh, outside towards the variator uh, side of the motor. Get that clip in first, it's hard to, but it also installing that clip first gives it something to push that uh, uh, rod the wrist pin. or the wrist pin to push up against so that when we go to install it, we only have. The one side and it's a lot easier to get to that one. And it pushes right up against that pin and now all we have to do is install the one side. All right, so you can see these little G clips or C clips um, have like an open end and then the part that I'm grabbing with the needle nose pliers. So what I do is I get the tip here into the groove and then twist it to go in. So let's see if you guys are able to see this. Your side seated. All right. And then if you're seated, you should be able to grab the clip and rotate it around like that. She's seated. So now we can push this together. All right. So now that we got the G slash C clips, wrist pin, everything, the piston's installed now. Now we can seat this, but make sure you get that scrape. Scrape. Yeah. Hold up. I'm gonna lift this too. I was, but I was gonna say too. You make sure you have your two dowel dowels on the far right ones on back here, and your base gasket. And like Brandon said, make sure your timing chain guide doesn't get pinched and you have your time and chain pulled through. So piston and cylinder put in there. And you can see a little bit better now here where it says in that's for the intake, it's on the top side. So now we need to put in our lower timing chain guide. Also, for the next bit, we're going to need to have our cylinder at top dead center. So, I'll move the camera again so you guys can see how you line that up on the GY6s. But this is top dead center right, up, right there. And you can see that the piston is at the very top of the cylinder. So, I'll move this camera again real quick <laughs> and show you guys how to set it at the top dead center. All right, so I zoomed out for just a second so you can see the, where we're at on the engine. This is your your flywheel fan and stator area. All right, so you can see here on the flywheel, there's a mark that says T. 
and a mark that says F. T is for top dead center, and the F is where it's going to fire at. And if you look here in the engine case, there's a rib. Wherever you line that up with, so like right here, the T and that line, that means we're at top dead center. And we need to be at top dead center to set our timing. Otherwise, bad things can happen. So just make sure that those are lined up and that will put you at top dead center. Even like you can do this if you pull your cooling shroud off and your whole engine's built. You can do this here just to see where top dead center is at. All right, so now that we got that in there, we went ahead and slid our head gasket on here. Um, and now it's time to put the head on. So we will put our dowels in again. This time it's top right and bottom left so that everything's aligned. And then it does come with new exhaust studs, which we went ahead and installed now, just to make it easier. So this will be similar to the last one where you just slide it on, make sure your chain doesn't get caught. And then everything lines up. All right, so we're now ready to install our cam. And if you look at it, if it'll focus, see there's these lines across here? These lines need to line up with the, the head here. And then the, the bigger circle, the hole, faces away, because then that will put your cam lobes facing down at top dead center. And to install this, what you can do, since we don't have our tensioner in there, is it's kind of a trial and error thing. You slide the chain on. The guides are being a pain. So you can see, you look that this line here is out and that one's in, so I'm off a tooth. So what I need to do is just rotate it. Rotate the tooth. And then we'll check again. Adjusted the tooth. And now, I think you guys can see that. The line here is lined up with the head. So now we are in time. All right, so now the cam's in there, I'm gonna add a little more lubrication. All right, so now we're ready to put our rockers on. But I'm going to put the dowels in first, which will be top left and bottom right this time. And then on the rockers, there's some letters. It says B, X, and E, X. The E, X goes down, because that stands for exhaust, and your exhaust is going out the bottom. Make sure your rockers aren't impeding your work. And then put these on. I'm just hand tightening these for now because we'll have to get the torque wrench out and actually torque these down. last one's being stubborn. All right, there we go. So these are just hand tight for now. And then I will get the torque wrench and we can torque these down with the proper specs. All right, so now we need to get these guys torqued down and we're gonna do it in a cross pattern to 16 foot pounds. So 16 foot pounds, or as Jeff said, for Uggas. For Ugga Ugga. <laughs> All right, so she's torqued down. And now I can get these guys the side bolts put into. So Brian, if you want to torque yours. These engines really like to vibrate, so I like to lock tight. Everything. All right, so that's on there. And now, I'll let Brandon put his side bolts in. 
I can put this cap back on. Like I said, it's got the little EGR spot, but it's just, it doesn't go to anything. All right, now we're ready to slap our valve cover back on. Oh, no, no, before we do that, check our valve, our valve. So I'll grab my feeler gauges and then we'll get those adjusted. All right, so actually what we gotta do next is put the tensioner in. Let's get a little focus. And so there's normally a little cover on here. Brandon already pulled his off. Oh, right here. It's just a little cap, a little flathead, or should be Phillips. Uh, but if you look in here closely, if it'll focus, there's a little slot. And so you need a little flathead screwdriver, and then you twist it, and it pulls the tensioner in. And it's supposed to lock, but I don't think I've ever had luck with them locking. Oh, I did it! <laughs> so now we have heard it carefully. Take it over here to Brandon's engine, and set it back in the hole, and we don't have a new gasket, but the ones that were on these are still good, so we'll reuse them. Put in there gently. And now you can use the screwdriver to engage it. And then you have to take your, your chain tension there. It should be good. And then the little cover can just be screwed back on. Now we can check our valve clearances. All right, so we're ready to adjust our our valves now. Um, now that we got our tensioner back in, and one thing to do first is double check over here on your flywheel that you are still at top dead center. Because if not, you're gonna have a bad time. You also need some feeler gauges, and your spacing that you're gonna do is 0 .004 inches, which on mine is the very smallest one. So there's a nine millimeter nut here that we need to loosen up. And this would be a lot easier if I actually had the valve adjusting tool um, I need to pick up. But what we'll do is just get it loose. Okay, she's loose. So you loosen up the nut and then the inner part, the tap it, I think that's what it's called, and screw in. And then you just need to go where that's making contact with the actual valve Get your feeler gauge in there. And you want some drag on it, not free flowing. So we can get to that point and tighten it. And since we don't have the actual valve adjustment tool, this might take a little trial and error. So tighten that. And then actually, wow, first try. <laughs> like I still have a little drag on the, the feeler gauge, but it's not free flowing, it's not. I was still able to go through there. So I got really lucky on that one. So now we'll go down to the exhaust one. Put the feeler gauge in there. Tighten that down. Back it off a little bit. Okay, turn it down. And I think I need to do that with a little bit more. Loosened up a bit. All right, now double check it. Okay, we should be good. Just a little tiny bit. And then one thing I usually do too is now rotate this. And you can see it's actually going to move the valve just a few times and I'll put it back top to the center. And then I can double check them. So that one loosened up a little bit, so I'll need to readjust that one. And same with the exhaust one. So. Like I said, since I don't have the the right tool for this, or the, not necessarily the right tool, but the better tool for this, um, it'll just be trial and error. So I'll have to go through this a few times. Um, 
both Brent and I both have to do that. So I will uh, just go ahead and do that off camera, and then we'll be back in a second. All right, so now that I got the valves all adjusted, we're just ready to slap the valve cover back on. And I still need to replace this one. It's the old EGR one. That's why it's got this big lump here. But for now, I'll put it back on. I have to buy another one. All right, and it's back together now. The only thing is I don't have the cooling shrouds on. I'll do that in just a second, just in hyperlapse. And I gotta put my spark plug back in. But it's gonna, yeah, I gotta clean those plastics and everything first, so. Get those cleaned and throw them back on here. All right, so here's mine all back together uh, as far as it can be until it goes back on the, the bike. But carburetor I put on here just so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, it will come back off just because it's easier to install this with that not on. Um, but yeah, so this one's back together as far as it needs to be for now. Um, Brandon had to go because his kid had a baseball game, so I'm going to get his bike finished up. Just Same thing I was just doing here, putting the valve cover on, cooling shrouds, all that stuff. And then, yeah, then we should be good to go. All right, and there we have it. We've got the Pro Build 171cc big board kits fully installed. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty much plug and play. I mean, honestly, the biggest thing to remember is just when you're watching the video is we went with the Pro Build uh, uh, kit from Rolling Wrench because it's a plug and play system. There was no need for us to bore the case out uh, like some of the other ones that you can find on eBay or Amazon or wherever. Um, so we were able just to pull everything off, put it back on, and, and pay attention to those parts of the video where we're very meticulous about looking for those uh, um, grommets. What were those? Uh, the dowels. The dowels, yes. Yeah, there's a Lots lot of little details dowels. to make sure you really pay attention to, but other than that, it was really straightforward. Mm -hmm. so, so with that, we're done with the kits, but we're not ready to throw these back on the bikes yet because we are both going to be installing... Ta-da! The rear disc brake kits yep. on these engines so we're gonna do that before we slap them on so that will go ahead and we'll wrap up this video but then the next video will have us putting these brake kits on and then we'll have another video of us putting it all together uh running the new cables we need for the what the brake lines and then also the throttle cables and then put it on the bikes and taking them for a rip Ooh, that's so. gonna be fun <laughs> no, I can't that's wait. gonna be exciting so uh if you haven't subscribed yet go and hit that subscribe button uh, if you like what we're doing, hit that like button, and if you want something to say or just talk smack to Brandon, <laughs> leave us a comment. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Later, guys. And... So that can be a blooper at the end. Shit poopy. Shit poopy. It's raining, man. I mean... Hallelujah. <laughs>